Hello everyone, Richard here, and I've heard and seen your comments, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Matriarch, going over her stats, weaknesses, and some strategies on how to best defeat her. The Matriarch is the mutated form of Rachel Claimley and daughter of Kevin Claimley, more commonly known as the Patriarch. Despite being blood relatives, the Matriarch seeks to put an end to her father's work. While you may have mutual objectives with the Matriarch, her transformation has altered her mind just as much as her body. She also has an extreme distrust for Horzine and all of its operatives. Overall, the Matriarch seems to be a much stiffer challenge compared to other bosses, including her father. However, a lot of this can be chalked up to how novel she is as a boss compared to the other four. Fighting her consists of four separate phases which are determined by her health and status of her shield. The first phase will last until her shield is broken or she reaches 75% HP. Phase 2 will last until she reaches 50% HP, or both her weapon and head armor are broken, although they will break as soon as you enter Phase 3 regardless. Phase 3 will last until she reaches 25% health or lower. Unfortunately for you, the Matriarch also has a lot of health and is probably the most durable boss in-game from an effective standpoint. Her HP will be determined by difficulty and the number of players as you can see, but will range from a rather mild 4900 all the way up to 29,400. In addition to her base health, she will also have an active shield generator, which again will vary based on game difficulty and the number of players alive at the start of the wave. However, the shield generator is temporarily disabled whenever she performs an attack, allowing you to strike her armor and HP. Otherwise, all incoming damage will be absorbed by the shield. It's important to note that her shield takes base damage from weapons, meaning any perk bonuses for damage and hit zone modifiers are ignored by the shield. This rule does not apply to her armor or her base health, thankfully. Her second layer of defense, her armor, covers her head and left arm and protects her weakest points. Once again, the amount of armor will vary based on difficulty level and players, with the head armor being significantly more durable than the left cannon arm's armor. The Matriarch also has a host of attacks ranging from her claw, lightning storm attack, melee attack, Plasma Cannon, Tentacle Grab, Tesla Blast, and Warning Siren. Her most basic melee attack is quite powerful, however not something she is most remembered for. Her Plasma Cannon, by contrast, functions very similar to the Patriarch's Chain Gun, however is much more lethal and is considerably more accurate as well. Fortunately, it targets only one player at a time, unless someone else walks through its beam of course. She can also use this attack up to every 2.5 seconds. Upon reaching Phase 3, or destroying her cannon armor, she unlocks the ability to use the tentacle arm, allowing her to grab players up to 15 meters away. She will then use a swift follow-up melee attack against whoever she grabbed. The Lightning Storm attack and Tesla attack are very similar, however Lightning Storm is an AoE burst of electrical damage while the latter functions similar to Chain Lightning and will hit multiple players if one is within its range. Her final attack, the Warning Siren, is essentially the Siren Scream, however much stronger and damaging. It also has the same effect of destroying ordnance, so be careful when lobbing grenades or rockets when she performs this attack. What phase she in will determine what attacks she can use, as well as other behaviors like her movement speed, ability to cloak, and melee damage scale. In the first two phases, she will be able to use the same type of attacks, including melee, Tesla Blast, Plasma Cannon, and Lightning Storm. In Phase 3, she gains the ability to use her Warning Siren, but loses her Tesla Blast and Plasma Cannon abilities and moves significantly faster, especially while walking. In her final phase, she loses her Lightning Storm ability, but gains the ability to cloak, deal more melee damage, and move and sprint significantly faster. During her phase transitions, she also spawns in a wave of Edars, the first wave consisting of Blasters, the second consisting of Bombers, and the final wave consisting of both. Playing on Hell on Earth will also add trappers to every spawn wave, and due to how devastating her attacks can be, this makes trappers an extreme threat. Now that we have an idea of how tough the Matriarch is and what she is capable of, it's time to talk about best practices when fighting her and some things to avoid. Overall, avoiding her plasma cannon is probably the biggest and most obvious tip, as it can kill a full armor, full HP player in seconds. Next is finding a suitable location to fight her in, and typically any location with objects you can run her around in circles with, or 
Areas with ample cover to block her plasma cannon will do just fine. The ambulances on Burning Paris, tracked vehicles on Outpost, and crates on Containment Station are all good examples. Since her plasma cannon and Tesla blast attacks are arguably her most powerful, getting her down to phase 3 as fast as possible to disable these and break all her armor is advised. While breaking her weapon early isn't a bad strategy overall, it can be hard to do if you aren't playing a precision perk like the Gunslinger or Sharpshooter. While this can be a bit hard to control, especially in public games, bunching up makes her attacks much more effective, so keeping good spacing and distance from her will help preserve you and your team in the long run. Perks like the SWAT, Gunslinger, and even the Firebug can also help slow the Matriarch down with the right skills equipped. Crippling your speed makes a huge difference, especially when a teammate is critically wounded. Perks that may not be super effective at dealing direct damage to her, like SWAT, Commando, and the Field Medic, play an important role in dealing with EDARs, as if they're left to their own devices, they can exact some pretty significant damage on your team. Remember to not take your eyes off the Matriarch for too long, again, it only takes a few seconds for her to turn you into a pile of molten slag. This is most difficult when repositioning or when fighting off a wave of EDARs. A field medic, especially with the movement speed and damage syringe buffs, is highly recommended as the matriarch tends to focus on single players, especially after her first phase. While the medic may not be dealing a lot of direct damage to her, they can deal with most of the EDARs and on later battle phases this is really important as it can take the heat off of DPS perks. Getting hit with the Tesla Cannon is bad news bears not just for you, but the rest of your team as well, as it will damage them and has the ability to wipe out an entire team instantly. The Matriarch can also be frozen with a handful of cryo grenades, and this can be useful for saving a wounded teammate trying to make a retreat. She is also very vulnerable to EMP and in general becomes more vulnerable to incapacitation and affliction as she progresses through her phases. Relatively speaking, the Matriarch is vulnerable to Slash, Bludgeon, Freeze, EMP, and Microwave attacks. She takes half damage from SMGs, handguns, assault rifles, battle rifles, piercing attacks, flaming attacks, and the HRG heal thrower, and 40% damage from shotguns and explosives. As usual, toxic damage from healing darts and grenades will deal minimal damage. Keep this in mind when selecting weapons to fight the Matriarch, and as a general rule, Microwave and melee damage is always relatively effective against bosses. The Matriarch also has several weak points which are critical to maximizing damage, especially once her armor is broken. She will take increased damage to her head and her claw once her armor is destroyed. Targeting her Tesla device and lower left arm will deal neutral damage, and all other hit zones will incur a damage penalty of some kind, ranging from 50% to 75%. Incaps and afflictions such as EMP and freeze can make targeting her much easier, especially later on in the fight when her movement speed is much quicker and she becomes a fleeting target. Overall, it's understandable why so many people get frustrated dealing with the Matriarch. Not only is she fast and durable, but her weapons can quickly run through an entire squad of players. With that being said, I think she will become much less of a challenge as she is more easily understood by players. Her biggest weaknesses are her tendency to focus on a single target, allowing that person to easily kite around an object and barriers and letting your teammates deal damage unassailed. Just watch your back for ERs and be ready for her to switch her aggro to a new target. Thank you all very much for watching, let me know what you think of the Matriarch in the comments section below, and check out my community section to vote on the next video, but until then, happy hunting.